Okay, people, welcome back to... Um, Let's just have ourselves a little Marvel Legends Play Day. And I know I'm diluting the title Play Day quite a bit lately, but it fits. This isn't quite figure or fodder because I know that most of these figures are going in a display somewhere. Well, okay, there is this Captain America, which I bought mainly for the shield, but I'm thinking that Captain America looks pretty cool too. It's just that with prices the way they are these days, I'm not buying just random stuff thinking, well, that may replace a figure on the shelf. And if not, I'll just throw it in a tub and find something to do with it later. Don't get me wrong, I still buy more than my fair share of fodder, but it's usually because I already have an idea. I have a plan and I need that part for my pieces or that piece for my parts. Hell, I haven't even been grabbing full waves of Marvel Legends lately. I've just been cherry picking what I want, what I really need. So play day fits because I'm gonna be playing and then I'm gonna be displaying display day hmm basically it's an excuse for me to open up a bunch of marvel legends that's been piling up over the past few months that's it really it's a play day it's marvel legends we're not going to go in-depth hardcore here this line's been around for a bit so there's some reuse there's some expectations we already know what some of the range of articulation is what some of the parts look like we're just going to hit the high points and <laughs> get the plan. Oh, and now that I have this out of the package, it's a very nice Captain America. It's definitely Ultimates, which is what it's meant to be. So <laughs> I guess mission accomplished. Lots of nice scale mail up top. The stars on the shoulders are sculpted on. Same with the chest star and a star on the back. That scale travels down onto the bicep and then plain wide arm down to the glove. There's a pouch on a strap going around that kind of makes your eyeballs go right over to, you know, more pouches. Pouch, 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 shig pouch, canteen with a star on it, pouch, pouch. And then the boots match the gloves, kinda. There's no pouch down here, but there's that strap around the top and then into some nice wrinkle work with laces. Between the boots and the belt, there's some legs and a crotch, which is accurate to Captain America too. Did I mention the belt is really nice with that buckle, the silver painted on? Stripes on the abs have this stripey texture to them. Up at the head, it's the same problem I've had for 20, 25 years, however long this costume's been around. Captain America needs head wings. But at the same time, because of this being the ultimate suit, it doesn't stand out. It's not a bad thing. It's not a negative. It's just my own personal preferences. There's also this alternate head. This is more of a neutral look. And here he's angry. Urgh, ultimate. How does this go? Oh, in front of the camera even. That means it's a nice pop. There is a dumbbell joint at the mid torso, so you can get some tilt and some back and some forward. I wish there was a little more range there, but it's not bad at all, especially considering the costume. That fits with the design. Stepping back away from it though, the overall proportions, it does kind of remind me of later Toy Biz. The slightly longer legs, the shorter torso, it, it's the high crotch. Bringing in 20th anniversary Captain America, you can see it's a little higher. Grip hand on the right, spread out hand on the left. Oh, is this an overlay? Can I? Oh, yep, but <laughs> it's not gonna look very good with it off. With that, he has a right fist, and I'm realizing that the overlay makes this transition from forearm to hand really nice. And then he's also got a left fist. This is the main reason I grabbed it. I don't have an Ultimates display, so I don't really have a place to put him, but this is gonna go with my 20th anniversary cap because he's got this shield that has these effect pieces that plug in. And if you try to take those off, you're just left with square holes. Two, 490, two, 490. So they're the same size, they're just different in design. Wait a second. We need a new design for this because I went to push this higher up on the glove and I'm so afraid of stretching that because we've seen that more than a few times before. I do like the brighter colors here, but yeah. That leaves the figure, which again, I am completely good with, but now that I have it out of the package, I may try to take the belt and the gloves and the boots and put it on a US agent. Modernize him a little bit. Next up, the Target exclusive Guardians of the Galaxy classic Yondu. Yes, there is some assembly required. He's got this big mohawk head fin thing that 
plugs in. It's not that way. Put it in the trench and see where it goes. Got a little gap. Oh, okay. If there's some gap, keep pushing. What we have here is essentially body reuse with a couple of new overlays. Oh, and don't forget the new head with that big, beautiful fin. Looking at that up close, though, I love how the eyes peer out from the foosh blue. Seriously, my camera's having a hard time here. The eyebrows are nicely painted. There's a darker blue to have the lips jump out at you a little bit. The gold rectangles are painted on the arm here, but I kind of look at that as costume. My brain thinks those should be raised a little bit, but at the same time, it, it doesn't bug me. Well, I brought it up. So it may bug me slightly, but not enough for me to go, ah, Yondu sucks. He's an archer, so he needs to protect the arm, which I guess is a universal thing. He's from another planet, and it's still like, hey, we need to keep that bowstring from tearing up your forearm. Then I realized with the blue skin, he's just wearing these tiny, tiny swim trunks and some pirate boots. Then there's the actual rubbery overlays in the swirly twirly plastic. This bandolier coming around, this ornate bicep cover. Well, I say ornate, it's got a couple straps on it with some edges. There's also the bracer with a couple of raised edges, and and then the flat, smooth belt. Maybe that's an archery championship top thing. I can't remember if we've seen the pirate boots before. They are a separate add-on piece, so maybe we have. There's just been so many figures, so many characters, so many base bodies that I lose track at this point. All I can tell you is boot cuffs. But then down at the feet, like we usually see with this base body, we got kind of a duck situation going on. And you know, the more I sit here and look at it, especially up close, and maybe it's the movie portrayal of Yondu seeping into my brain, but there's almost an aged look to the face. These wrinkles up on the forehead, the sculpt, the seriousness, I guess. I'm realizing that I didn't read a lot of comics with this version of the Guardians. I don't know his comic personality. I'm overlaying my own ideas and the MCU version and thinking, oh, okay, he's kind of a father figure. He goes along telling them what they should and shouldn't do. I'm also fighting the urge to heat this up and straighten it out, but that is not a soft plastic at all. And the wave does add a little personality to it. So, eh, 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 it works. Comes with this quiver that is cast in that same shiny twirly gold. There's a bundle of arrows glued into the top. Oh, well, I say glued. They were glued. I just ripped them off. I thought maybe you could pull the arrows out. There's this clip right here, so all I have to do is put that back on there. There's a snap. Not a big deal. There's also a single arrow, and I was looking for a hole. There's nowhere to store this. There's also this bow in the same gold. It's going to stand out against the rest of the body with a clear plastic string. It doesn't go in his hand worth a shit. The grip is very narrow at the bottom there, and there's no place to knock the arrow. It's like, well, I don't know. <laughs> They've got a little itty bitty trench right there, but this seems almost like a grip for an action figure type hand, like split the fingers, put it on both sides of that. Sort of like this. Slice back and around. Yeah, there you go. See? And <laughs> the string isn't really gonna drag back. Maybe I'll replace that string someday. With the butterfly joints, it's not a bad bow shooting pose. How's this go in? Eh. It also adds a little bit to the figure with that sticking out from behind. Wish there was a hole in the strap though because it seems like, well, how about this? Oh, that's even better. It keeps the strap in place, keeps it tight. I can't find my Vance Astro, but we need more Guardians. We need some Charlie 27. We need some Martin X. We need the rest. And it's a Guardians kind of year, so <laughs> we need to get on the ball, Hasbro. But speaking of Guardians of the Galaxy, or at least Guardians of the Galaxy labeled product, here is Ronan the Accuser. Or Ronan, if you grew up in backwoods Arkansas in the 80s and had no frame of reference on how to pronounce Ronan. Ronan the Accuser. Now this is mostly reuse of this Colossus. You've got the arms, you have the legs, you have the boots. Then it does a nice job of changing things up with a new torso, a new crotch overlay, some shoulder pads, and then a new head. Because that's the biggest thing to distinguish people from each other is facial features. Unless you blind everybody with your beautiful, beautiful metal beard. So handsome. The shoulder pads are just pegged into the front and back. If you get wacky crazy with the arm coming up and around, you're going to knock those off. But it is easy enough to just plug right back in and go about your business. And the crotchticle covers are actually sandwiched or glued. They are definitely set in place here. And I point that out because when I got it out of the package, I thought, 
Well, I'm gonna drop that down a little bit, give them a little more torso, a little less leg, but you can't do that. It is there. Also this accent line around the shoulder pad, that is sculpted in, and so is the lighter green parts on the torso. I like how the banding kind of calls down to the banding on the arms. Where there is light green paints, it's applied pretty nicely. Is that? Nope, that was just a little bit of cardboard from the package. But then you have this swirly twirly lemon lime for the limbs and all those together it's essentially just green with some blue splashed right in the middle but it completely works the hood is also a soft overlay glued down right in the middle and it has a sculpted stripe going up and around so everything fits together it, it travels from you have him mean mugging out from under there those wide eyes on the black background oh it's so striking. That's along with the blue skin tone that it has such a nice sculpt. If that's all you're looking at, you're like, oh man, this guy is grumpy. It's a beautiful presentation. It definitely satisfies my need for a classic type Ronin, even though this isn't technically the classic Ronin look. At least for me, it definitely evokes that feeling. Right down to the intimidation factor of being this much larger than your regular figures. These are soft, so they will get out of the way of articulation. And like I already mentioned, these are pegged in and could probably have more movement to them, but I'm kinda okay with fashion over function. Most of the time, my Ronin is just gonna stand there accusing you. I know what you did. Crunchy and arky and twisty. Yeah, see, <laughs> I know I mentioned that a minute ago, but now that I'm kind of messing around with it, I thought I'd prove it. Also, the hood is gonna get in the way, especially looking up. Not a lot of tilt, some side to side, but he does the essential looking down. Ronan, big guy, accuser. He's gonna look down on people. But Ronan the Accuser isn't Ronan the Accuser without his big accusing hammer. They painted this lighter blue here and I really like how that stands out. It looks kind of energized. The head does kind of flop around up top. You can't twist this, but there's a looseness. Like it's just been snapped shut over the top. But oh daddy, you do not want to be hit with this hammer. That is a hell of a mallet. Next up here is the Squadron Supreme Hyperion and Dr. Spectrum. And let's take a look at this guy first. This is your standard Bucky Cat body, although the arms have been modified to be pinless. But for some reason, the legs still have pins. So if you have strong feelings as to whether it should be pinned or pinless, then this figure is gonna bug you. Otherwise, there's not a lot to say here. We've seen a lot of the sculpt details before. I don't know if the head is reused though. How odd is it that I just had a Moon Knight laying right here that happens to have the same head sculpt. So it is reuse. And there's the body we saw with Yondu. So it's all coming back around. The different colors are nice and clean at the separations. The blue is painted, well, I don't know, what color is this torch? Oh no, the blue is the plastic, which makes sense because the calf swivel down is also cast in blue. That means the red is painted here and at the shoulder while the arm is cast in red, and then the same over here, just in yellow. Green cast down to, like we talked about, the calf swivel. If I had one everybody living in Robo's world wish, I would want this green to be a little brighter and maybe the blue, just overall, have it stand out on the shelf even more. You get to the center piece right there, the white circle. I, I just painted on there, I guess it's okay. It calls up to the eyes, so that's pretty neat. Other than that, uh, here's your Dr. Spectrum. He does come with these two tried and true effects, this time in kind of a pastel -y color. You have the pinks working into greens, you have the yellows working into clear, and then these alternate open claw type hands. And that's what's definitely going on this figure because they're more expressive. And it's not like Dr. Spectrum really has anything to grip in these hands. And I say it like that because he has this to hold in those bigger open hands. And on the package, they have him gripping it like that, which does stay in. What happens when we plug the effect piece in between the hand and the arm? Oh, I like that. But I'm more into this set because of Hyperion. One, it looked like a nice upgrade to the old Hyperion, and that is so, so true. The old one had this peck shelf going on. It kicked way back and then into the head. And that sat too high. The legs are thick underneath that body, but most of all, this centerpiece of the costume was just painted on. This new one, it has a separate piece overlay and that is just so much better. It looks like the abs are still sculpted under there because two, 
I'm also interested in this base body. The whole arm is Hercules and it's the same with the legs. New boots to get rid of the sandals and new torso. The articulation scheme's been changed. Crunchy, creamy. You have this overlay piece essentially pointing to center. So if the pecs aren't on top of that, you can definitely see it. I'm guessing because of the studs on the dumbbell joint in the middle, <laughs> neutral position is hard to get. It's either sitting to here or sitting over here. Well, okay, that actually centered up a bit. Maybe me doing this for 30 minutes loosened it up a bit. Overall, it's just a powerful looking body, which is not really different from Hercules, but this is a lot cleaner. This seems like they could get more characters out of it. Then there's the head, and I like this a lot more than I was expecting. The skin tone's kind of pale, but it has some shading to it. There's an orangey color to the hair with a wash to bring out all that nice detail, but it's the domino mask that surprises me. Look how it fades from darker up high to lighter down low. There's a shadow under there that is so subtle, but works so well to give them a slight sinister feel. And I'd like to see it without this, but <laughs> it doesn't feel like it comes off very easy. There's no seam line, and I'm guessing it is glued overlaying the crotch right here. In fact, it doesn't feel like there's a waist under there, hence the dumbbell there, so you can get the twists and the forwards and the backs. He does come with a couple of grip hands, but I'll never use those. Hyperion punches. He looks tough with those fists. And it looks like the cape is plugged in too, so if you're wanting to use this as a base body for customs, you're gonna have to cut this off, and you're gonna have to fill in the holes there. Otherwise, again, very superhero-ish, but clean superhero-ish. Hmm. And now we need the rest of the Squadron Supreme. You can't just start the team and not finish it. Well, I guess Hasbro can, but I don't want them to. And then getting into my Marvel meat and potatoes, we're gonna finish it off with some X-Men. Although with Rogue here, it's kind of the same situation as Yondu earlier. It's a plain base body with a new part on top. This definitely evokes her 80s costume and the hair sculpt is nice. It looks like Rogue. It's just not my version of 80s Rogue. When I picture this costume, it's more of the sticky up hair. You know, it's kind of that crazy, looks like she's been flying 100 miles an hour for 100 miles look. This is definitely based on the J. Scott Campbell look that they put right here on the package. And like I said, it is a beautiful sculpt. You have some waviness, you have some full body to it. There's some curls. There's a lot of action to it without it being super swept to the side. And then the face paints are super nice, the rosiness to the cheeks, some personality to the eyes, the eyebrows and lips being in the right place. And then the body is reused, but I am super happy to see the double elbows. And both those and the knees are pinless, which does add some stability down here. I have noticed the later figures that had pin double knees, they get kind of wobbly here, fairly solid. And with that, the costume details are just painted on. In the comics, it wasn't always raised edges. It, it kind of looked like this in places, although the boots did angle? Did it come down and then this was higher and then this was lower or something? But it would have been nice to get a sculpted edge here and here and here and here. The hair does get in the way from looking up, which is kind of a shame because she's a flying character. At the same time, this is also her, she had long hair. Really my biggest problem is how high these come up. <laughs> and it's just a painted line. It's not like there's any skin showing. It, it, it should have been lower. I have been seeing people swap out the upper torso with Enchantress, which gives her a little sculpted detail, a cut across here, but then you're still left with the painted sleeve and the legging, so it still doesn't match up. Is that going to stop me from trying it out? Probably not. I love 80s Rogue. I customized this in anticipation of this. I know the hair isn't perfect Rogue, but it's more 80s than this. If this was a figure of fodder, this may be fodder just because, well, it's a clean female body too, huh? With all the articulation upgrades. So if Shriek ever runs dry, Rogue may be a nice replacement for that. Does run shorter than the Jim Lee 90s costume, but at the same time, it was the 90s. Everything got a little bigger and buffer and bulkier. She's got your standard female splayed out hand, but those do pop out and she comes with two fists, which I may leave in there because those being a bit smaller does bring the proportions up slightly, like she's a little more powerful. But it depends on the pose, and actually, I kind of like that. Flying characters I usually hang on the wall, and she has that hair where I can put a thumbtack 
and the head is going to keep her floating up. I may have just found my display pose. From there, we're going to get into the X-Men issue 275 three packs where they're dressed in their training uniforms. And let's start with Jubilee. Is that focused? There we go. Let's start with Jubilee. Smaller body than the rest, appropriately, since it is Jubilee, and it does reuse some parts from older Jubilee. It's the same gloves and the same head sculpt. The torso doesn't match up with the vampire Jubilee either. That's got some wrinkles in there. The legs have to be new because it has these straps and that same design work at the top of the boot. And then there's this belt. Very tight, very high, very 90s. Almost high enough to bug me. I know that is pretty accurate and I guess I can bring it down a little but still higher than my brain wants it to be. The collar is also a separate piece that you can move up and down. It has the same style as the straps down around the legs. So overall this totally works. My only problem is that the yellow is a bit messy here at the glove tops. Again yeah Jubilee training uniform. She also comes with a couple of these effect pieces. We've seen these before you just kind of twist and twirl them up around the arm. You can either have them up here or kind of sticking off the hand as a shooty effect maybe. She also comes with two fists but for Jubilee since her power set is shooting I'm okay with these open hands. She also comes with her trademark glasses that you just slide right on and at first I thought man there's no way those are staying on but once you get them in place yeah not gonna be a problem because you can either use them on this head or the alternate head where she's blowing a bubble. That's really the only difference. Oh, well, I guess the big difference between the old ones is the photo reel on the face. The old one's just traditional paint. Same with the even older one. With Forge, there's also some reuse here. If you have the animated morph, you've seen the torso and the crotch and the left leg. Well, I guess half the right leg too. Those legs were also on the animated series Cyclops. And that's where we get the arms from. I think the glove top is new though and they got their money's worth out of that because <laughs> we'll get to the other three pack here in a minute. The head is reused from the first forge. Same ponytail, same bandana, same facial features. It's just been updated with a new paint job and the mustache is cleaner but I'm not sure I like the brighter skin tone. I may have to take my casting cave forge head and put it on here. In fact I'm now interested in transferring regular forge parts over to this body. It'd be a brighter yellow. Hmm. The shoulder straps are reused, but this time around we get the little silver dot on the button. I always appreciate that little detail. Surprisingly, the robot upper right leg is not reuse. There's different details going on there. I'm guessing it's new so it'll fit the proportions of this bigger body because side by side it has more heft to it than the old Bucky Cat body. And then of course there's that new belt to fit in with the rest of the team, the other figures from these two three packs. Oops, I did forget to point out that the collar, again, separate piece. So you can adjust that, bring it around. It fits in with the straps down here and here. There are two fists, but I'm leaving these on here because he also comes with this techno type gun. I'm pretty sure we've seen this before with an old army builder or something. It's kind of otherworldly feeling, kind of mutant feeling, but it does bring in the pink from Jubilee just to tie the team together. The stock goes up like that, so it's not easy to get into a shooting position. With these ribs right here, it almost feels like it's supposed to go over the shoulder, but I have plenty of weapons laying around, so that'll probably get replaced. And then there's Storm, and... <sighs> I love a good storm. This is going to get monotonous because they're all wearing the same costume, but you have your collar overlay, you have your glove cuffs, you have this new piece that's inserted in a new leg. So that's cast in yellow, and then the boots are cast in yellow with those same straps up at the top. The belt riding super high. Again, I wish I could bring it down, but that's about as low as it gets. But here it's all about the head sculpt, and while I prefer my Aurora with the long flowing hair in the wind and the tornadoes, I'm also okay with the short haircut too. Have the lightning bolt earrings, the eyeliner around the eyes, the red lips, just a hint of teeth showing. And then the eyes are almost ivory, which completely works because it's Storm. She just has a presence and it's no different with the figure. This head may be slightly smaller or it's the hair throwing me off. Either way, it looks like the same person. She also comes with two fists, which threw me at first because Jubilee's hands, well, they're maybe slightly smaller, but the big tail is the length of the pegs. Storm's pegs are meant for a bigger body. But the electric hands are way cooler, except 
the paint is really mushy. The electricity is meant to come up the fingers and they painted out there. So yeah, the fade could be better. And actually that mold's nasty right there, but it works in a pinch. For the other three pack, we're gonna start with Psylocke because we were just talking about Storm and it's a lot of the same figure. But that's okay because it's meant to be a team uniform at this point. They're all in the same gear. For some reason, Psylocke's belt sits better. I don't know if I messed that up trying to pull it down, but it still sits high. It just doesn't seem to ride on. Oh, Psylocke's is round. Storm's is kind of off round. I don't know what's going on there. But same arms, same glove cuffs, same legs, same overlay on the collar piece, but Oh, <laughs> we got a good Psylocke head finally. Because here's the old one, here's the new one. I definitely, definitely like the new one better. And that's the reason I'm contemplating getting an extra of this set because, does this just swap right over to here? It's a little loose, but oh man. Just very nice facial features. There's even a little shading to the lips. And then there is purple in the hair. Not completely purple. You can see the black streaking through there, but just overall, vastly, vastly superior Psylocke head. And I'm not even a big Psylocke kind of guy, at least Ninja Psylocke, but this, yeah, this completely works. There is a flat palm right hand and a fist left hand. I'm gonna go ahead and swap out this left because you need that in order to use her psychic knife. The focus totality of her psychic powers. I mean, it's just reuse of the first one, but it's translucent this time around. That makes it even better. And I think it's the same for her psychic katana. I don't remember what it looked like. The first. I can't seem to find it, but again, translucent purplish pink color. And then it has this piece that comes down over it. Oh, and I forgot to mention on Storm, pinless double elbows, pinless double knees. There's a lot more stability to these and range. Look at that. And I guess I wasn't reading whenever she got the katana, but, or, <laughs> or I've just forgotten about it but it sure makes for a nice presentation. But then we get back to the guys with Gambit and like Ninja Psylocke, I'm not the biggest Gambit guy, but when done well, he looks really, really good. I mean, I don't remember the reason they were back in the training uniforms, but Remy being Remy, he still had to put his own flair on it. Well, I say that there's no reason for Forge to have the metal showing. It's still the same shape. Costume will go over that, but he still has it out and showing. And for some reason, there's costume going up onto the knee. Was Gambit's head sock just to keep his hair in the upright position? I'm thinking yes. Again, we talked about Forge, all the body parts and everything. Gambit is the same, except for a different head and hands. But it is very Gambit head and hands. We've seen that card holding hand for years. And at first glance, because of the hair sweeping up and over that way, I thought it was going to be reuse of the first Gambit, but it's not, thankfully. Those french fries leaning out of the carton, it seems like the wind is just blowing too hard. This looks like it's fashion that way. Not to mention the kick-ass face paints, the photo reel. It is just, oh, it's so much better. I mean, the five o'clock shadow should have made its way over here, but the eyes, the eyebrows, the shading. I like the slight redness to the skin around the eyes, like it's been glowing, like he's been charging things or something. I don't know if that's accurate, but I'm going with it. This is also not the more relaxed head we saw with the Target exclusive retro carded Gambit. I like this hair much better, but again, the face paints and the eye positioning wasn't great. This is gonna be hard to beat out of all the gambits. And again, from a customizing point of view, if you can do this and put this on here, holy shit, that looks fantastic. That's another reason to buy another set of these customizing potential. Oh, well, I guess it would make more sense on this body because the black head sock, the black body suit, it is a little loose, but you can't scoff at the results here. To make LeBeau more LeBeau, he comes with this satchel, which is reused from Longshot, I think it was, or was this first and then Longshot used it and then it's coming back around? Oh, wait, we've seen this with Green Goblin and Hobgoblin and a bunch of other characters too. But this makes sense because Gambit needs things to throw and there's no pockets, no pouches on the training uniform. He had to put his cards and stuff in there. Speaking of that, there's this energized card effect. You can see the slight paint job giving it a card effect, but it's still translucent. That's gonna go right there. Oh. But if you're wanting something a little more energetic, there's also this left hand. You have the suits painted onto the cards out here. It's still the same problem as we saw the first time though, because the card being further out here means he's throwing this way. This effect piece is backwards. It should have the, the thicker here and then the trailing off going here because whoo, 
but it still works if you don't think too hard about it. Then there's also a grippy left, so he can double grip his staff. Again, we've seen this before. But I saved my most anticipated for last because, oh man, Banshee has been missing from the shelf forever. Well, there's this one, but whew, early Hasbro had its downfalls. You put these side by side and you're just like, get out of here. It is in the green and yellow, and this is the blue and yellow, but man, this'll do for now for now. Because instead of the overlay neck strap, he comes with his iconic collar. And I know it's weird calling a collar iconic, but when I think of Banshee, that's what I think of. He's just a few swap parts out, like getting rid of the gloves, getting rid of the boots and these straps on the legs, get rid of the belt, some green, and we're good to go with some classic Banshee, hopefully. The head sculpt is great. It's kind of that cocky Irish grin, the sideburns, the red hair with the dry brush on top of it, giving it an orangey, fiery feel. Oh man, I, I couldn't ask for better here. And at a distance, I like how his cape wing things lay at ease. And before you say that's Banshee adding his own flavor to the costume, like I said with Gambit, he, those are required for him to fly. He's got to have those to interact with his screaming to and getting him into flight pose again it's not bad the, but then you get up close and see how they actually attached them and man those are some big old pegs it's sewn fairly close to the glove but then this i don't know if that's a child safety thing or they had to do that so it wouldn't easily come off but there's nothing attached past that sewn point. Same thing down here at the legs. It, it doesn't come off, it doesn't slide off. So it makes me think, can I snip as close as possible right there? Get rid of some of that excess plastic? Make it less visible from the front? Although admittedly, you do this and you can't really see it. It is hidden. You turn it to the back and they're bam, right in your face. But this is also, not very pretty to look at. Colors are much deeper on the front. Again, in neutral position, not bad at all. It's what you think of if you were wearing this costume or you were standing beside somebody wearing this costume. These would drape and kind of flow forward. No, 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 no. How close am I gonna cut that? Let's try here. Didn't fall apart. The world didn't end. <laughs> yeah, before the day's out, I may be snipping all those off. And I've got accessories to look at for him, but I've been standing here for five minutes like this, just looking. Banshee looks so good. He does come with a couple of splayed out hands. Then there's the screaming open mouth head. And I usually don't go for that kind of thing, but it's Banshee. This is his power. The hairstyles do change from neutral to screaming though. The sideburns are gone. There's more of a flowy, and I know this is him using, so there's some blowback from the sonic blast or him flying, but it's almost like different eras. Also the green eyes poking out, so pretty. If you want them in the screaming position, I won't. can we get that further up? Yeah, but still, <laughs> I keep coming back to this. The best thing about two, three packs releasing at nearly the same time along with this retro Wolverine, the team is done. Here's your display, boom. There are other characters on that cover that I will take in action figure form, but as far as the core X-Men go, here they are in plastic. But getting them all together does make it more apparent that the straps on the legs were supposed to be down where the females are. Those are correct. The guys were put up high because of the reuse from Cyclops. In the grand scheme of things, oh, this just looks fantastic. It's an X-Men team completed. Now, give me more astonishing and out back and start the new X-Men team and finish off Excalibur and there's some other teams to finish up. So at the end of the day, we got to play. That's all that matters. It's hard to come back around and go, well, I don't really like that figure because I consciously bought it because I like the look of it. You know what I mean? It's not getting a whole wave for a build a figure and there being a couple of figures that are kind of, well, okay. I guess I'll take those. That's not the case with these. I wanted the X-Men 275 team sets and that's exactly what I got. Now give me a classic Banshee. Ronin is gonna be beautiful for the Cosmic Shelf. Same thing for Yondu. A very nice start to the Squadron Supreme. And then I guess Cap doesn't wanna focus at all. Thank you, Yondu Finn, get out of the way. I guess the Cap is fodder, but if I was into Ultimates, it'd be a perfectly fine figure. And then I got Rogue just because of Rogue. I like the costume, I like the colors used here, but to me, that's not 80s rogue. You guys know me, I'll make lemonade out of lemons all day long. If there's customizing potential, even better. But for the most part, these are going straight onto the shelf. I do, man, 
the Gambit head, the Psylocke head, the Banshee parts. I hate to buy another set and customize Banshee when you... You know they gotta use that for the old green and yellow. And I know I keep coming back to that, but he is so high on my list. But the Gambit and Psylocke heads are so superior. They're such upgrades. I, I don't know. That may be a wait for clearance type thing. And then we need a Nighthawk that matches this squadron along with this Power Princess. And I guess they're calling them Blur now. Way better than Wizard. Way better than Wizard. So yeah, I finished one team, started two more with Guardians. Well, I guess Guardians started a while back, but this squadron, it never ends, but that's okay. 